Welcome to the Old School Gamers Channel everyone. Today we're going to talk about how to get your send and light guns running on the newest Pi image called Bare Bones version 9. Let's get into it. So Bare Bones version 9, definitely want to give a shout out to the contributors such as Widge and Luther and Cheeky. This is a great image and I know that the community is really going to enjoy it. So while there are many differences between version 8.2 and version 9, the biggest difference is that version 9 supports a mixed mode. And what this means is when you put light gun games and non-light gun games into the same image, there's not going to be as difficult of a configuration to get these working together. In addition to that, a lot of these configs have already been done for you. We've also upgraded the RetroPie version, done some tweaks to a lot of the emulators, and of course the Send and Light Gun scripts we've done some tweaking to as well. The list of all the changes and details will be put on the Light Gun Tech website, which is also in the description. Alright, so you're going to go up to the lightgun.tech website and download the Barebones version 9 image, and the link will be in the description. Alright, once you've downloaded the file, it'll be a zip file. Make sure that you extract it and you burn the .img file to your SD card. So what you want to do is open up Belena Etcher, which is my preferred choice, and you're going to go ahead and browse to the file, the .img file, select it, then you're going to select your SD card that you want to burn to. If it gives you a warning, go ahead and say continue, but make sure that you selected your SD card. Also, when it comes to connections, don't forget that your HDMI out has to be connected to the one closest to the power supply. When it comes to determining who's player 1 and player 2, it's based on the boot order of your Raspberry Pi. The USB 3.0 ports come up first, the top one then the bottom one, then the USB 2.0 ports, same thing top then bottom. Alright, so we're going to put that SD card into your Raspberry Pi, and we're going to boot it up. Once it boots up, you're going to see the welcome screen and hopefully you have your gamepad attached. Go ahead and go through that and configure your gamepad as you need to. One of the first changes you'll see is we now have a Send and Light Gun collection and we'll go over that later. But first, let's set up your Wi-Fi. So go ahead and select RetroPie and scroll down to Wi-Fi and select that. What we're going to do here is the first one, connect to Wi-Fi network. It'll scan and hopefully it'll see your network. From there, you select your SSID, and then you'll enter in your username and password. Once that's done, we'll be able to actually upload our ROMs and our BIOS files into the Pi. First, we're going to go ahead and cover the Send and Light Gun collection. So inside here, you're going to notice that we have a section for activating all the guns, and you can do that as recoil or non-recoil. There's also deactivate guns. You can start the guns individually if you like. And of course, there's the Supermodel 3 startups and of course, the test calibration of each gun. Let's try the test calibration first. Barebones version 9 does come with the latest 1.8 software, so you don't have to worry about upgrading it. Once it launches the screen, the calibration screen, you'll notice it has a grid. And this lets you see if the calibration of the gun works across all areas of the screen. As always, with version 1.8, you do have the ability to calibrate your gun. So if the crosshair is nowhere near where you're aiming, then you can use the instructions on the screen to uh, correct that problem. So go ahead and do that for both your guns if you have two or three or however many you have. So the calibration and test screen is a one-time deal. You shouldn't need to do this again unless you're doing something like switching TVs. If you're having issues getting the mouse to move on the screen, check the following. First, make sure you have the correct gun in your hand for testing for player one and player two. Next. Make sure you're standing at a distance equal to two times the width of your screen. So if you have a 10 foot wide screen, then you need to stand 20 feet away at least. And this is because the light gun needs to be able to see all the edges of the border. Next, try unplugging other connected devices to your Pi and see if another device is interfering with your gun's ability to be detected. And make sure that the light gun is plugged directly into the Pi and not a hub. Next, increase the contrast and or brightness and dim the lights in the room. If this works, it indicates that you probably need the gun's uh, exposure, contrast, and brightness settings changed in the lightgunmono.exe.config files. 
Next step is to try another display. See if it's the light gun or the display that's causing the issue. And lastly, try to run the video processing mode test uh, that's found in the send in wiki. And this will help verify the light gun is actually working properly. The reason that we actually put in the Supermodel 3 scripts is because that emulator has a different aspect ratio than most of the other ones. And so what we had to do is create scripts that have a different aspect ratio adjustment for the calibration. Another reason we created these scripts is because they enable off-screen reloading in Lost World, unlike the standard scripts which will not. There's also the original start each gun individually, so you can do that as no recoil or recoil just like before. One of the new features of course that we talked about is the activate all guns, and what this will do is start up any gun that's attached to your Raspberry Pi. If you're having any issues with the guns, definitely recommend stopping them and then activating them again. So now that our guns are calibrated and we're on the network, we can start uploading some ROMs and some BIOS. Let's do it. There's one other thing that we need to cover and that's the config.txt file. This file is used to configure your Raspberry Pi and a lot of different settings that are in here are very important. With your Pi powered on, go ahead and open up PuTTY. And PuTTY is a utility that allows you to log in to your Pi using a remote connection. Make sure that your host name is the IP address that you got when you signed on to your Wi-Fi network, that your port is set to 22, the connection type will be SSH, and then you'll just click open. Once the screen opens up, you're going to type in Pi as the username, and then for the password, it's Raspberry. Now what we're going to do is type in cd slash boot, and I did an ls so I could see all the files that are in here. As you can see, I've made a backup of my config.txt file before editing it. So if you want to do a backup, I'm going to remove this one. All you got to do is type in sudo space cp config.txt and then the name of the backup. I just called mine config.txt.back, then hit enter. Now what I'm doing is I'm editing this file so that I can overclock my system. Just be aware that if you do this, you're on your own, you better make sure you have plenty of cooling and that you know what you're doing. If you don't, then I highly recommend skipping this part. If you do know what you're doing, then continue onwards, but you're still doing it at your own risk. So ever onwards with your dangerous self. If you want to do this, go ahead and type in sudo vi or nano config.txt. If you know how to use vi, you can do that. If you'd rather use nano, then type nano. I'll use nano for this example. There's a lot of different settings in here, and I'm not going to cover all of them, but I'm going to cover a few that are very important. For example, the top you'll see overscan left, right, top, and bottom, and you'll see negative and positive numbers. These are the parameters that you'll make edits to if you're having issues with the image fitting on your screen or display. But that's not what we're interested in. I'm looking for the overclock section, and here we are. So you'll see that there's over voltage, arm frequency, GPU frequency, uh, force turbo, and GPU memory. And all you gotta do is just uncomment all of these and it's that easy. Now if you really know what you're doing, you can change those values, but those are about as good as you're gonna get. Now let's move down and talk about the HDMI mode. There are several modes which the RetroPie documentation talks about. And one of the new changes that we've used in BB9 is we've switched to a 720p output resolution instead of a 1080p. The reason for this is that the 1080p is not necessary as most of the games that we play, if not all of them, don't even reach the 720p output resolution anyway. And so this gives us the benefit of getting a beautiful picture without the waste of unnecessary CPU power. You'll definitely get a bump in your performance if you do this. For now, all I'm going to do is just the overclock settings. Once you're done with all your edits, go ahead and hit Control X. It'll ask you to save the modified buffer. Just hit Y for yes. And then it'll ask you the name of the file. Just hit enter and you're done. If you did make any changes, you'll definitely want to type in sudo reboot. If your Raspberry Pi does not boot, then I would suggest reflashing BB9 because you've done something wrong. One important note I want to cover Unless you love pulling your hair out in frustration, do not upgrade anything including RetroArch or RetroPie. BB9 is designed so that all you need to do is drop your ROMs and your BIOS files into the right folders and start playing. An upgrade will get you very bad results. 
You'll go on Discord, you'll ask us for help, and we're simply going to tell you to re-image. One thing we need to cover is how the games are divided up. Barebones 9 takes one step further and takes the light gun and non-light gun games and separates them, and that's how it supports the mixed mode of having both types of games on the same system. So light gun games will ideally go into the light gun game subfolder. Let's take an example like the NES. So when you add your games in here, if you put the game inside the light gun games folder, then it'll pick up the light gun game config file if it's named correctly, and we'll go over that in a second. And when it does that, it'll determine that it does need the configuration file, and it'll use that file to set up the guns and the border for that light gun game. If it's not in the light gun game folder, like let's say you put Super Mario Brothers in here, then you're gonna see a generic bezel, if any, and the send in border will not appear either, and your configured controller should work. <laughs> So now that we kind of understand how the ROM folders are set up, let's do a quick example. And I highly recommend that once you get Barebones 9 set up and you're at this point and you're ready to upload your ROMs and your BIOS files and you just want to do everything and you want to hop right into Arcade and Dreamcast, I say, no. I highly recommend just starting up with the basic consoles first. They're a lot easier to troubleshoot. The difficulty of troubleshooting Arcade, for example, is that every single game is like its own little, you know, sub ecosystem, as Widge would put it. So if we're going to upload the NES games, let's take that for example. Under Home, Pi, RetroPie, ROMs, NES, make sure that they use the no intro naming convention, that their ROM file names match the config file names. There are exceptions to this rule, such as the Commodore 64 and non retro arc systems, such as Daphne. And I'll show you where those configs are. So let's go back. So before you upload your light gun games here, make sure that they match. We're going to go all the way out. We're going to go to Opt, RetroPie, Configs, All, RetroArc, Config. And for the Nintendo, we're using the FCEUMM emulator. So here we are. Here's all the config files for all the light gun games used on the NES. So let's say you wanted to upload Duck Hunt. The no intro naming convention for the Duck Hunt game is duck space hunt space parentheses world parentheses dot CFG. So hopefully you have a duck hunt world in parentheses dot zip. And that's what you're going to upload. So this is where you want to look if you're going to upload your ROMs. And that would be for any of the emulators listed. All right, so I'm in HomePie, RetroPie, ROMs, NES, Light Gun Games, and I'm gonna upload Duck Hunt. I gotta make sure that it matches the no intro naming convention. So I'm gonna go down to my NES and my Light Gun Games. And here we are, Duck Space Hunt Space parentheses world parentheses dot zip. Yep, that will definitely work. So now I would take a pause and test this game. And booyah! Restarted emulation station, started up Duck Hunt, and of course I get bezels and borders. So if the names don't match, you're not going to get the right bezels. You'll probably get generic ones from the Nintendo, or you're just not going to get any at all. Alright guys, that was pretty fun. As you can tell, I play way too much clay shooting. Alright, let's go back to the computer, and now what we're going to do is upload a non light gun game, so you can see that it works. So what we're going to do is go into Home, Pi, RetroPie, ROMs, and we're going to continue on with the Nintendo. And why not? We're going to upload Ninja Gaiden. Or Gaiden. That's always been a thing. I don't know how you actually say that. All right, go back to the game. I'm going to restart it. You guys can watch me play. Let's see if it works. All right, guys, very cool. So I am playing Ninja Gaiden, a non light gun game, and of course, Duck Hunt, which is a light gun game on the same uh, Raspberry Pi with little to no effort. And that is one of the big advantages of Bare Bones 9. And if you go through the rest of these emulators, all you need to do is in the same fashion, put your light gun games inside the light gun games folder. 
All your non-light gun games, just put them in the main folder. Daphne is the exception to this rule, so the Action Max and Hypsius games go into the Daphne or Action Max folders per the existing guidance. And now we're going to do one more with the pedal, and it's going to be the arcade game Operation Wolf. Yes, it is one of my favorites. We're going to go up to OmPi RetroPie ROMs, and in the arcade, light gun games. And what we're going to do is upload it right to this folder. So Op Wolf zip, put it right there. One of the questions that you may be asking is, how do I know that I have the right ROM set? And I covered this briefly, but I'll show you this example just so that you can kind of get another idea of how this works. So, to make sure that you get the bezels and the borders to pop up, when you put stuff into the Light Gun, uh, Light Gun Games folder, let's check out Opt. We're going to go from here into RetroPie, Configs, All, and let's look at the Emulators Config file. Now, yes, we are going to put the uh, compatibility list up, but you guys can find this a lot easier, but just want to show you how this works in the background. Anyway, so for the Arcade Op Wolf, we are going to be using LR MAME Storm Bubbles, and that is based on the MAME 245 ROM set. So that's the one that I have. Uh, I've uploaded it into HomePie RetroPie ROMs Arcade. So all I got to do is restart Emulation Station, and I'm going to set up my pedal. Uh, I'll probably make it the Grenade Launcher just to make it more fun. And we'll have a little uh, Gun Time and Operation Wolf. Let's do it. All right, there you go, Operation Wolf. Everything was working fine, except for me dying. <laughs> That's a tough game. But yeah, I had the gun working, I had the pedal working. Uh, I set the pedal to uh, the to button, which was a grenade. The pedal can be used right out of the bat, as you can see. You just set it up and uh, press the button and main. For RetroArch, it's set up as the uh, auxiliary A button on your gun. And for kicks and grins, I got one more test. I've already uploaded 1944, but I want to show you how if I launch it, it'll just go right into the game. There won't be any borders, there won't be any bezels, but the game will play just fine with your joystick of your choice. Very cool. So now that you can add light gun games and non light gun games together, definitely check out the compatibility list. There are so many light gun games that you probably don't even know about. Games from emulators like the Tick 80, uh, there's Singe of course. Sega Model 3, uh, the NDS, of course, Dreamcast, Naomi, Commodore 64. There's a lot, guys. So definitely check it out. Anyway, this was a lot of fun. Thanks for joining us. Hit us up on the Discord if you have any questions. And I'll see you on the next one.